right, so on the surface, it appears that if you're good at math, you're a good software developer. It's actually how I got into it. I was good at math, and so engineering is always a topic that's brought up if you're good at math. There are different types of engineering you can go into, and computer engineering or computer science is one of them. But do you have to be good at math in order to go into computer science to be a software developer? Computer science and software development are very logical, and math is logical. There's step one, step two, step three for how to do long division, and it's similar in software development. There's pattern matching, it's very organized, there's a way to show how you got from step one to step ten, and you show your work and all of that, and variables get evaluated too. But what does it mean to be good at math? Does it mean you know how to add, subtract? In order to do computer science, and there's some disciplines of computer science that are more mathy than others, you at least need to know algebra. And by algebra, I mean evaluating variables. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have this equation, f of x, equals x plus x. Now, if I do f of 5, I replace x with the value 5. So now it's 5 plus 5. Now I could say the value f of x equals 10 because when I put in 5 for that equation of f of x equals x plus x, f of 5 now evaluates to 10 because 5 plus 5 or x plus x equals 10. Instead of 5, let's say it was f of 7. Now it would be 7 plus 7 instead of 5 plus 5 because x has the value 7 and f of 7 would equal 14. This is very computer science-y, these types of equations, where you have a formula and then you input values into that formula and you come up with a result. There's also various steps, and so this only had one step of addition, but you could add a bunch of multiplication or subtraction or other you know, types of tools in there to come up with your final result, but the idea here is the same. So if you can do this, you can absolutely do computer science. And even if you don't fully understand this, that doesn't mean you wouldn't be a good computer scientist. If you're doing things like computer graphics for video games or machine learning, those do require more extensive math experience. But your typical day-to-day -day software developer does more stuff like this. So being good at math is kind of an indicator of being a good computer scientist. It's not a complete indicator, but it's a indicator. It might be something to try if you like math. What are other indicators? If you are someone that likes investigating stuff, so you go down the rabbit hole in the internet trying to figure out what disease you have or more information about the wine you're drinking, if you are someone that really likes to know the details of things and research down and fully understand stuff on a very foundational level and understanding all the details, computer science might be for you because as software developers, we have to do that a lot. So we have to really understand how stuff works in order to make sure our applications don't break and we maintain them correctly. If you like understanding the details and the bare bones of how things work and a summary isn't just for you, computer science might be worth trying. Now, another indicator could be, do you like coloring? Do you like making? So coloring, it's kind of a long process. It takes a while. It, does, it isn't just immediate on getting to that final product of your sheet is finally covered. So you do need patience in that, but you also need to enjoy the process of making the thing, making whatever it is that you happen to be making. You have to enjoy that journey and those details. Most of the time, the code you write as a software developer, it's not gonna be right the first time. And so you have to have a lot of patience in making your product. Are you someone that's a planner? So do you like to plan out goals or plan out your vacations or just plan things in detail? As software developers, we have to plan out full-on systems in advance before we even start implementing them. If we don't plan, then we do all this work and then it ends up breaking or not working in the way we wanted in the end, costing us money and time and all these things that are really unnecessary to spend if we just planned more and thought things out more deeply. Another good indicator is do you like puzzles? So 500 piece, the 100 piece puzzle, like my family does one every holiday. Are you someone that comes to the table and really likes working on it all the time? Even maybe you take breaks and you come back to the puzzle and you continue to work on it, but do you enjoy that activity or do you just kind of like it completed? If you like working on that puzzle, it has a lot of problem solving in there and finishing the puzzle. 
along with escape rooms. There's a lot of problem solving in that and computer science has a lot of problem solving involved in figuring out where the errors of the application are or how to create a certain experience in your application. There are a lot of problems to solve. Now are you someone that likes talking to people but also kind of likes their space to do independent work? You like a combination of those two things, talking to people and having your own space. Computer science could be for you. Now a lot of people think software developers we just you know sit in a room and code all day and make things by ourselves and that's so not what it is at all. You have to meet with people, you have to create design plans, you have to talk to people to figure out how you want to implement something or create something. You have to discuss different strategies for how you could create this thing. It's not something you do alone. So you have to like people in order to be in those meetings and discuss things but you also have to like doing your own thing because really when you're working on the code or you're building a feature or something sometimes it does require you being at your computer for an hour or two to do the work. Another thing you should ask yourself is do you like asking questions? So are you someone that asks question after question, why is the sky blue, all of those things. Like are you someone that won't take a flat answer for a given process. If you're someone that doesn't make assumptions and wants to know the core, core, core of what's happening, software development's for you. Because as software developers, we have to constantly ask ourselves questions about what are we assuming about our user? What are we assuming about our data? How can we get rid of those assumptions so our applications can be more versatile? If you're making assumptions, can you recognize that those are assumptions you're making? Making strong assumptions early on and not realizing that you're making them can cost you a lot of money and time down the line. If you are someone that can point out those assumptions, that can be pretty valuable. Are you someone that likes to be challenged? Not everyone likes to be challenged and that's okay. Some people work to live and so they go to work so that they can have fun on the weekends and that's totally fine and that's the way some want to live and that's totally fine but if you enjoy being challenged at work, bringing your full self to work, figuring out problems and a lot of times you'll come to work and have no idea how to do it or what what the problem is but that by the time you leave work or even the next week or the next month you slowly figure out that thing and you're constantly faced with challenges that you have to solve it's a lot of problem solving as we discussed before if you're someone that likes that and likes to learn from each challenge software development could be for you ultimately you have to be in it for the learning a lot of times products fail and so if you're there for the product and you're really excited about the thing you're making that's great but you have to enjoy the process of learning how to create that application that product might not ever reach completion it might not ever be made. It might not ever go to millions of people. So you have to enjoy that process and that journey of making and that journey of learning if you're going to be a software developer. And maybe you don't enjoy it at first, but slowly you do. And that's okay too. So if any of the things I said resonated with you or one of those things I said, you said, yes, I actually do like to do that. Or yes, I do think in that way. I would really encourage you to give software development a try. I've made technical tutorials here on YouTube for how to get started and I have courses on LinkedIn Learning that might help as well. More than any other jobs in the world right now, you can absolutely get a software development job without a computer science degree. Whether that's through a boot camp or learning online, if you can prove your skills in an interview, you'll get hired. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you in some way, shape, or form. I'll see you next time and happy coding.